Yeah, that's something he told uh, Henry Dora, the writer of First Season and I, he said, I'm going to teach you how to make Star Wars. And I think that's something that's always been important to me personally, is that I, when I got this job, I wanted fans to really get the Clone Wars as George meant it to be, as he saw it. So I uh, tried to get into his brain and take everything he said very seriously and try and get that up on screen for everybody the best that we can. Well, you've certainly done a tremendous job. I host the Clone Wars show, which I hope, if you haven't seen it already, there's another show at three today with me, it's the best one, and another one at five. <laughs> uh, we show loads of clips from the movie. Dave talks about uh, his work on, on screen as well. We see an exclusive clip. So if you can, uh, if you can hang about and see that today, I recommend it. Now, Dave, you yep. primarily were an artist. You yep. draw character, you're an animator. Mm -hmm. Will you do something? I, I don't know, with this contraption here, yep. I'm sure is there's a pen <laughs> here. You're going to actually draw a character. I'll help you with that. Me and Jake will lift this for you. Oh, Dad, don't strain your arm there. It's very important. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. For, uh, it's interesting. For eight years I worked in animation. I never touched a computer. Um, but So the basis of a lot of what we do is still drawing. You know, a strong sense of drawing that was good. So um, George tasked us with uh, giving Anakin Skywalker a Padawan. See. And that was a really big deal. We had never heard of that, and so we wanted to really, well, what that could be like. And so, so the, of the, name of the name of the Padawan, his Padawan is Ahsoka. This is Ahsoka Tano, yes. Yeah. She's uh, Anakin Skywalker's Padawan. So I had to bring that to life by drawing her first. And uh, this is what pretty much I drew. Now is this the first, did you come up with the look straight away, or did you refine it over a series of drawings? There are a couple of what I think of as prototype drawings of Ahsoka where she had slightly different facial tattoos, and uh, she had a slightly different outfit. That got modified over time. I would do an initial sketch, uh, something simple, and then I would uh, mock up a maquette, which is a little statue of a character. Oh, yes. And that's what I would uh, take to George, and George would look at it, and he'd recommend some changes or whatnot. I actually did a whole page of uh, facial markings, and. Uh, let George pick which one he wanted to be on the final face. Uh, secretly, he picked the one I wanted. I put it third because I always figured that the third one is the one that people will pick. So yeah, well, it kind of works. Kind of guess well there, but um, yeah, it's been a real great collaboration. But she was a tricky character. She was, originally we thought she'd be a Tegruda, but Ayla Sakura, uh, Amy Allen's character, is very popular, and I didn't want uh, it to interfere with that and confuse uh, fans. Shock T was a little less known, and uh, because George actually is a very big fan of Shock T, um, I thought it'd be neat to make this character also what's known as a Tegruda. That's the species. That's the species, yeah. Orange skin, uh, three Leku, two in front, one in the back, so. What are those called? Leku. Leku, yeah. They're like head tails. Head tails. Head tails, yeah. Very good. So. You know, all this great vocabulary now. That's the, those are normal words up at work. We use them all the time. Yeah. It's a, it's a real learning process for some of the people. So that's really, you just, you can talk and draw away and, and we see Ahsoka appearing before I ever Yeah. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that. Thank you for learning. Brilliant. Thank you, Dave. Let's move this uh, this table out of the way because we can't see you otherwise. <laughs> Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to say, you're, you're thinking of going back out in the park this afternoon. There are a few thunder showers about, so uh, to be very careful because you might get a soaking wet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, my guests have been brilliant, and I've been up here doing all the hard work, asking all the questions. But now it's your turn to take my place. Not literally, this chair's not big enough, and uh, you don't look as good. <laughs> it's now time for Star Q&A. Public to ask a question. Yes, we have Brandon from Kentucky. Thank you, Brandon. Hello. Hello. This is primarily for Dave. Uh, okay. If you could comment on the future of Star Wars and features and on TV, um, especially animation, what else is up to come? Well, the future for Star Wars is very bright. Um, it's going to be expanded in ways that uh, I think is unexpected. Uh, besides the film coming out August 15th, we have a Clone Wars television series that will debut this fall. And uh, what fans I don't think have totally realized is that they will get 
to see Star Wars uh, every week after that point. There's no more three years of waiting in between movies. Um, yeah. And then there's George is also long-term working on the live-action television series, which is uh, really starting to get up and running and record columns on that. So that's, I mean, and that's exciting for me because I don't like to know about those things because they're secret and spoiler-like. So I'll have another series to watch as a fan myself. So, so when you're walking around the corridors of Lucasville, you yeah. try and avert your gaze. If anything's remotely related to the live action series, you don't want to know. Yeah, you don't want to know too much stuff. It's just, you know, it's, I have so many secrets already that, you know, I have to keep. It's hard enough knowing anything more. Just Is that what you keep under your hat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All those Lucasfilm Star Wars secrets. Thanks yes. for that question. Next one, please. We have Drew from Kentucky. Hey, Drew. Sort of Jake, um, like after the movies and like now, are you still like a Star Wars fan? I'm sorry, what was the last? Are you still a Star Wars fan since you're in the movies and, and up to this day? Do you still do you still watch Star Wars? Do you still like Star Wars? Star Wars is a certain place with me especially. I have always, I liked them a lot when I was younger, and um, I mean I I particularly like the fan base. Um, I just I don't know. I uh, I'm excited about seeing your movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I really, I, how can you not really like Star Wars, though? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and Jim, our final question today, please. It's going to come from Chris from Florida. Why is Plo Koon your favorite character, and what do you like about him? Yeah, what is this Plo Koon? <laughs> What's his obsession? Well, as a fan, I have waited a long time to see what other Jedi Knights looked like. And I'm sure a lot of fans were excited about that too. Mm -hmm. So when the council scene came on in Phantom Menace, I was glued to that screen, and I would have liked to see even more of it than we got to so see. So what did we see? Just can you just give us a reminder? Yeah, well, we basically saw. we saw saw you in the middle of it at one point. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, we could recreate it. Now. And, uh, Jake, stand up in the middle there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and we're going to recreate the council chamber live now. Okay, I'll try to be younger. So. Well, maybe okay. you can sit over on this side because Floskoon's always next to the doorway. Okay. So he can get out and stay alive. But, um, <laughs> he basically sits there like this. And Mace, when you said something, he kind of goes... <laughs> and that was it, which is pretty... I must have captured my imagination, so... Um, <laughs> But he was cool looking. He was a Jedi in design that was kind of left over from early thinking when the Jedi were going to be even more of a police force. I see. And there was a thought that kind of like Vader, they would all have certain amputations or mechanical limbs integrated to their bodies. And that's why he originally had a breath mask and the goggles, just a little Vader-like. But he was cool looking, he was obscure, uh, you know. Fans uh, like that, they like the obscure. Yeah, I mean, we all know who Bosick and Dengar and IGD and Forlom and Zuckus where their names aren't even mentioned in the movies. But I say that and they all go, oh, yeah, the Trandish and Lizard. Everybody knows because we bought the action figures. So <laughs> Flo Koon, you know, in that vein. And uh, he's a cool design, I'm going to say. Thank you very much, Dave. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Filoni and Jake Lloyd. Star Wars weekends before onto this show, you'll know that we like to say goodbye to all of you in a very traditional Disney way. Okay, so uh, to do that, we have to sing a song and we have to uh, make ourselves look even more dashing in these lovely hats. Yeah. Okay. I have to change my hat. I don't even put it on top. On top. Yeah, then I won't recognize it. I can take that off. That looks great. Gentlemen, would like to join in there. Could I have um, a C, please? Get it to tune me. La la. Why? Because...